So, do you have a victim's mindset? Victim mindset is something that I feel is kind of overblown. Now, am I a licensed therapist or anything like that? No, but I do understand that some people do have to put up boundaries. You can't always reason with unreasonable people, but I do make this video because one of my friends and I were talking and I was explaining something to him. Uh, we were talking about something that was very um, objective and then it turned into a subjective thing because he calls me up and he kind of changed the conversation to how I had some sort of like chip on my shoulder or victim's mindset or everyone else is always the problem, which isn't really the case. I'm usually a guy who owns up to, you know, if I do something wrong or we'll, we're willing to talk out something. I usually am very open. If someone has a grievance of saying something that, um, you know, if I did something that might have offended them or something like that, we could talk it out and I could understand at the end of the day why you did and I'll give you a definite answer. And I was like, okay, I'll be more aware of that next time. That's happened plenty of times in my life where I've had, okay, you know what, this person was able to talk about it and, you know, it was really only a one-time thing. Now, obviously, if it's a four, five, or six thing where it's like I just have to walk on eggshells because this person wants me to fit in a specific box, then, yeah, you know, like everything in life is a gray area, just kind of like victim mindset. And the one thing, though, is a lot of us try to put the, the victim label on people who just kind of refuse to be a victim um, because... That was the thing as I tried to tell him. I said that I don't even think that I had a victim's mindset. I think that, you know, obviously there are a couple instances in this year that have been very dramatic and I have cut it out, nipped it in the butt and removed myself from those situations just because I don't expect there to be really any middle ground a lot of the times. So like I said, we're all argumentative. We all like to do that. And I think the older you get, the more you realize, look, if you want to believe that the Earth's a cube, go ahead, knock yourself out. If you think that you're right and I'm wrong, um, you know what? Go ahead. I really just, uh, I, I don't really care so much about winning a debate. My ego is not at that point now that I'm at that spot. But you also realize when to walk away from certain things. Not everything has to be met with confrontation. You can't always fight fire with fire because the person throwing the fire is going to, you know, start playing victim himself, you know. But I think that there's a big scene because I have had a couple of dramatic instances. One, I've had a breakup. One of my friends from about a year started causing problems and vandalized my property. So I told him to leave and I haven't heard from him since. Um, and then, you know, obviously I did have to uh, kind of resign from uh, an industry after one of the jobs I had was trying to pin something on me that really just wasn't my fault. So obviously those are like three things. But, you know, if I look back at all of the stuff good that's happened this year or all the good memories, I think those outweigh the you know, really big negative things. And, you know, obviously I get confirmation from other parties that I wasn't in the wrong. Like, for example, my ex, right? We have a mutual friend um, and we were talking and, you know, obviously I'm supposed to be keeping this between me and this guy, but he even said I'm only nice to her because I work with her. I should, I wanted to keep my mouth shut because I didn't know how that was going to blow up or anything like that, but I'm glad it didn't work out for you because a lot of people who, you know, uh, have the same opinion as you do right now. So I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew I had gotten myself from a toxic situation, and what happened was I was stuck in... Um, I was stuck in an area where maybe I thought for a while I was being selfish, but I kind of realized, no, I just don't need to be shouted at, berated, and everything like that. Any normal human being would walk away from that. But I think that's the thing is I had a, I refuse to be the victim to this mindset. I would rather be by myself, happy, have my inner peace, than take on a bunch of problems that I never was signed on to. Um, and I told, I actually did... Um, tell them that, that I am actually happier for being off on that. And I think that's like the thing is, you know, and maybe my buddy is just a standard case of, you know, being very self-righteous because at the end of this, of this conversation I had with him, um, he said something, he said that, um, you know, maybe I didn't know that about you. Like, cause I had to really go in depth with my past to understand that I had been a people pleaser a majority of my childhood. And then I ended up kind of becoming not fully, but just a little bit more selfish, just for a healthier perspective. Because unfortunately, the world's not always built 
to the point where we're always going to be, you know, able to be sunshine, rainbows, um, happy all the time. In fact, there's a lot of times where you have to put your foot down and say, okay, you know what, this is not fair. No. And you got to acknowledge that they just, you know, want to get their way. So you have to stop trying to reason with unreasonable people. Um, that's actually very true, but you know, I think I got him to look at it in a way, and this is why I'm still friends with him is because he took accountability himself where he said, you know, you know, I just didn't know that because I've never been that people pleaser as a, as a, as a teenager. And I think that's another thing is a lot of people right now, especially who are selfish in their adulthood, end up looking back at their childhood where they were probably very big givers. They were probably very big um, people pleasers. And, you know, if you do enough things, you kind of realize how many people sleep on it, take it for granted and everything. And then you set yourself up for a realistic expectation of people always coming to you to fix all their problems. And you can't really believe that people become that dependent. Um, But you kind of, you know, it's a wake up call. And then you have to take inventory and say, okay, I have to lower people's expectations because what corner have I painted myself into where all this pressure and all this burden is on me? Nobody should ever have to deal with that much pressure. And it's like what my father used to say to me, no good deed goes unpunished, meaning there's going to be some sort of long form or bad form you know, or, or short form that's going to end up bad if you continue to try to play the righteous thing because this isn't really a storybook and we're not all heroes. You know, I think that's the thing. It doesn't mean we always have to be villains. I know that's tossed around a lot, like villain arcs and everything like that. But in contrast to the people who were very selfish in their teenage years, and now they are a little bit more stable, where for me, I explained it to them as like, I have to make sure my mask is on before I could put on other people's air masks if there's turbulence on the flight. But I I gave him an analogy that sometimes you try to put the mask on while your mask is slipping and they don't care what happens if your mask falls off as long as they get the oxygen they need, you know, and I think that that's why they say always put on your mask before you help the mask of anybody else, because, you know, we do live in a very selfish world. Unfortunately, we do live in a very corrupted uh, space. I know a lot of black pill stuff goes around that talks about that, but I'm just being a little pragmatic. Right? I'm not being all doom and gloom. I think that there's a lot of people that we could go around and, you know, really like there's people in my life currently that I would give anything for because I feel comfortable giving them to it. And I know that they're, they're my friend and they have my back or they're my family. And that's what happens. It's just the thing is you realize at a certain point, that's not everybody. So you get people who are people pleasers in the beginning and I think they become self selfish a little bit through heartbreak, through realizing that they're not as full handed as everybody else through that. And, you know, I think that that's just a very realistic thing. But the backlash that some of these people pleasers go when they put their foot down can be a little, you know, harsh, too, because then all the people who benefited from having that doormat will say, oh, you see, this person's the victim, this person's the victim. I don't think that person has a victim mindset. I think what that person does is has a, I refuse to be a victim mindset. Now, if they were going to continue to complain about the mistreatment and not do anything or not get off your, off your butt to do anything to change your life around, then obviously you have a victim's mindset because you're comfortable being the victim. It's almost like karate kid. You know, if they were to tell us with Cobra Kai coming out, right? If Dan, if people were to label Daniel LaRusso a victim because he's fighting back against the bullies, no, I think he's training with Mr. Miyagi to not be a victim anymore. So there's a huge difference between accepting victim mindset and just refusing to be a victim of people wanting to take advantage, you know, because ever since I've kind of rescinded my my good deeds, I will be honest, I understand my worth more, I have more energy to put towards myself, make myself a thing, because then when someone who really counts in my life needs my help, I can fully be there. And those are actually the most fulfilling moments in my life is when I could be there for people who have really earned my respect, and have really earned my ride or die status with. Um, But you know, obviously, I do want to close this video with the one thing that I did point out. I said, you know what, buddy, you do have a point that, yeah, am I coming off as because those three instances, those three negative instances, whenever we're getting together, I'm talking to you about those three instances out of 50 something instances that happened this year, right? And only three of those are bad. And I've been sharing the three with you. Okay. Now, 
obviously I could work on sharing the more positive stuff and not hyper focusing on the negative where, yeah, it will sound to a lot of people like I would have everybody out to get me or something, because I think that's what people hear when someone comes in and they have nothing but negative dramatic stories to say. And it's not necessarily a drama YouTube channel. You know, I think when you turn off the cameras and get off the internet, you'll see a lot of people who just don't want to put up with all that drama. They're clicking on those videos to hear all that stuff voluntarily. They don't want it to be forced on them. And, you know, obviously there is a very constructive moment with this buddy of mine where we were both kind of like looking at ourselves on a realistic standpoint, not to where we're being too harsh on ourselves or where he was saying, oh yeah, no, I have to not have an opinion or saying, you know what? I have to live in complete servitude to everybody around me and completely disregard myself at the end. We kind of just came to a healthy understanding where I said, you know, obviously we go through these changes in life where we start off at stage A and then kind of move on to stage Z. But let's not go too far to one side and kind of still understand that not everyone's interpreting our attentions the way that we interpret them. But, you know, if you're a people pleaser, though, and you are vibing with anything I said, just understand the second you put your foot down and say, look, I've been doing in service to a lot of other people and a lot of people haven't really been um, reciprocating or they have an unrealistic expectation, don't let them point the finger at you and think that you're a victim or anything like that. You're refusing to be a victim to people being selfish, in my opinion. But that's what I got to say. I got to close this out because I don't want to talk for too long. But um, you know what? Anyone who vibed with this, just understand that you're only a victim when you refuse to do something about negative situations. When you sit there and complain about the negative situations in your life and you don't do anything about it and you just take solitude in the complaints, then yeah, you are having a victim's mindset. But if you choose to do something and you want to get to the point where you don't have anything to complain about, you don't have a victim's mindset. You have a I refuse to be a victim mindset. But that's all I got to say. Peace out.